Hi there students, thanks for visiting. Uh, we've done uh, quite a few videos, 22 to be precise, videos on the network concepts uh, topic, uh, all different types of uh, concepts there. And this is a quick revision video. Uh, it's aimed at those who've done some detailed study about all the techniques and just want to refresh their memory on uh, the main issues. So we'll go through pretty quickly and um, if you're not sure of certain sections uh, go and watch the full video of that section and uh, get to the bottom of it. So I um, hope this helps. Let's see how long this takes. <laughs> so they got vertex, vertices, edges and loops. To get used to the ter terminology, a vertex is um, a point or a dot in a network diagram where the pathways meet or intersect. So A, B and C there are vertices and they're also called nodes. An edge is any line connecting those vertices. They can cross each other without necessarily having a vertex there but most of the time when they cross they have a vertex. Okay, so you've got two types. You've got a directed edge with arrows on them, also known as an arc, and uh, it indicates the, that travel's only possible in the direction of the arrow. Makes sense. So you've got AB and BD having arrows there, so they're called directed edges. And of course you've got undirected edges without any arrows, so travel is possible in both directions there, and you've got AD, AC, BC and CD as examples of undirected edges. Okay, you've got a weighted edge which has a number on it. It suggests some value such as distance or time. So that's 286 kilometers between Sydney and Canberra there. So that red line is a weighted edge. And uh, we can use it in lots of different ways later on. A degree of a vertex is the number of edges that are connected to it. So um, here uh, you've got various degrees. So the degree of A is 3 because there are three edges connected to it. And we can also state whether a degree of a vertex is either odd or even uh, by the number of edges that are connected to it there. Okay, a loop is a special bit. It counts as one edge and it also adds two to the degree of the vertex as well. So it only counts as one edge if you're counting up the edges. Directed networks are networks where there's um, all of the edges having arrows on them so uh, your travel around that network is particularly directed Undirected networks are where the, all the edges don't have any arrows and you can move between uh, vertices as you see fit along those edges in either direction. Simple networks uh, don't have fancy things in them such as edges, multiple edges and loops. Travelling a network you've got all different sorts of things. A walk is the general overall term for getting from one place to another. Any connected sequence of edges without any restrictions really. Uh, between uh, vertices, so uh, that could be one of them. Now when we get more specific uh, with various restrictions or extra conditions on it, we uh, change the name. A trail is a walk with no repeated edges. So here's an example. We didn't repeat any edges, we did repeat one of the vertices, but that doesn't matter for a trail, it only worries about not repeating any edges. Okay, another condition here, uh, we call it a path if we don't repeat the vertices. So it's got to stay well away from any vertices we've used before or visited before. So that's a path. We've also got a circuit. It's a type of walk with no repeated edges, but also starts has the condition that it starts and ends at the same vertex. So here's an example. It, um, yeah, it's a walk. It's got no repeated edges. We didn't use any edges twice. It starts and ends at the same vertex. It did repeat a vertex though. Okay, a cycle is a walk with no repeated vertices. It starts and ends at the same vertice. Don't visit any vertices twice or you don't have a cycle. So that's a cycle there all the way around. Okay, traversable graphs. A graph is traversable uh, it includes every edge and it's got to be uh, the test for a traversable graph is whether you can trace it without taking your pen off the paper getting around all the edges so here's an example we can go F A B C D E F D and we can do all that without taking our pen off the paper and we um, included every edge and we didn't repeat any edges so that's a traversable graph non-traversable graphs you'll find that you can't um, trace it without taking a pen off the paper or repeating an edge. Here's one here. We go around the edge and we can go down one of the diagonals but then we find ourselves in the bottom corner. We have to either repeat one of those edges or take our pen off the paper. Therefore it makes it a non-traversable graph. 
connected graphs is where every vertex is connected to every other vertex either straight away via an edge or indirectly via other vertices. So you can visit anyone you like on those connected graphs if uh, you're visiting their house as a vertex. A graph is uh, connected if every vertex is accessible from every other vertex. Isomorphic graphs, they're interesting pairs of graphs that may look very different but when you have a close look at them they contain equivalent information and the information we're looking for is that they have the same numbers of edges and vertices they corres uh, have corresponding vertices that have the same degree same number of edges that connect there and corresponding edges connect to the same vertices so if we have a close look at this example, these examples here um, back there. A, B, C, D are all in the same situation in both diagrams. They're uh, connected to the same vertices. If you close look, have a close look, none of the um, vertices have changed the, um, their degree. They have the same degree between the two. And the same number of, of total edges and vertices are in the two diagrams. And same with that one if you look closely enough as well. They're a pair of isomorphic graphs. Weighted graphs um, is a network of di network diagram with lots of weighted edges and in they indicate values such as distances and stuff. We're pretty familiar with those sorts of things. And they may show distances in kilometers or it might be you know steps between two trees or whatever, who knows. Okay, to draw it from a table, our headings become our vertices and our cell values, the numbers become the edges, the weighted edges. And uh, so we have a look at the video if you're not sure how to do that, but it uh, makes sense when you look at it long enough. Eulerian trails or Eulerian trails. A Eulerian trail uses every edge exactly once and starts and ends at different vertices. That's interesting. And it exists if it has exactly two vertices with an odd degree. So that was our example there. It, we can use every edge exactly once and not repeat any. Starts and ends at different vertices. It started at C and ended at B there and you can check out the degrees for yourself. Eulerian circuits uh, uses every edge exactly once again but starts and ends at the same vertex. That's the difference. Different vertexes for uh, Eulerian trails. Same vertex for start and finish for Eulerian circuits if you need to know the difference there. They might ask you, you never know. And uh, it's got a degree condition there that you can check out as well. There's some examples there of Eulerian or Eulerian circuits. Okay, it's trees and spanning trees. A tree um, it just connects, um, it's a graph connecting vertices really with no fancy things, no edges, no extra edges that aren't necessary. And you'll tend to find, uh, matter of fact always, a tree if it's got a certain number of vertices it has one less edge. Okay, a bit of a pattern there because we don't really need to draw the last edge in on a on a tree because um, all we do once we connect all the vertices we're done. A spanning tree is pretty fancy. It's um it's a little diagram or a part of a of the full graph of the original graph that connects all the different vertices and you can do that in different ways. Some minimal, some maximal. Minimal spanning trees is a spanning tree of minimum length. It connects all the vertices with the minimum total weighting for the edges and but some of our uh, practical examples later on uh, have that. Two ways to find uh, your uh, minimal spanning tree that we use. Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm. Let's have a look. Start at any vertex. From that vertex you've got to choose an edge with its lowest weight. Then from anything you've done so far you try and keep choosing edges with the lowest weight to connect to your diagram. So here we have it. We're connecting at all stages to uh, vertexes that we haven't, vertices that we haven't been before and not uh, going back and visiting a vertex that's already been collected and that gives us the uh, minimal spanning tree there and we can figure out the minimal spanning tree length to solve problems. Kruskal's is very similar or it doesn't really need to uh, have our diagram as we collect the vertices our red diagram here doesn't need to be connected to each other we just keep choosing the smallest uh, edge that we can see that uh, brings in a vertex that we haven't done before and in the end we uh, end up with a very similar if not identical minimal spanning tree if we use the same diagram like I cheekily did. Kind of proved the point though and we can add up those uh, lengths as well and get the same results as we got for the prims. Kind of reassuring really. Slightly different methods but end up trying to do the same thing get a minimal spanning tree. 
Okay, and we applied the minimal spanning tree to a, an example where we had houses and uh, water pipes to connect. We used Prim's algorithm to get a diagram to make sure we didn't uh, put any extra water pipes in the ground and cost ourselves some money. So that's a good application there for connector problems. And we can figure out just how much money it will cost to connect. Shortest path was a bit old school. Pick some likely shortest routes and use your common sense there. Don't go around the long way if you're trying to find the shortest path. And just um, check out likely shortest paths, calculate their lengths and compare them. And I think you should be able to pick which one's shortest, which one's smallest. Because it'll either save your money or save your legs sometimes. So there we have it. That is Network Concepts really fast and I'm hoping that this uh, video on quick revision has helped you refresh your memory. You can watch it a few times and make sure you've got everything in your brain there. But all the best for any tests you're going to be doing for this and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for uh, thanks for listening. PeterBlakeMass.com. See you again.